Today on Core Conversations, we had Derek Friday. Derek is a Plies instructor in the greater Toronto area, and he and I shared our stories of being Black in Toronto as Plies instructors. There's not many of us. We talked about the dynamics of training dancers, training our dads, and what it means to be a real man by definition. Enjoy the conversation. Well, hi, everybody. Um, here at I Saw You On There. Um, my name is Derek Friday. I am a Pilates instructor. I have developed my own bar program as well. So I've been in the fitness industry for some time, um, for a good 10, 11 years now. Um, I started off as a ballet dancer at a very young age, um, went professional quickly, uh, and it just kind of all blossomed from there. I come from the entertainment industry and I kind of fell into fitness, um, as a profession in my early thirties as okay. like 29 thirties when I kind of fell into it. Yeah. Yeah. Can you talk about your dance background your, and how that went for you? Yes, it was great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was an experience. Um, it really did fine tune me to have a sp- a specific, a particular edge in what I do now, um, yes. because movement has always been um, a forte of mine. Um, so it was really wonderful. Um, I started dancing when I was five years old um, in Ottawa. That's where I'm from originally. Okay. Uh, I became involved with a studio in Ottawa called the School of Dance, which was associated with the National Ballet of Canada. So did summers and all that. Uh, And it's funny, actually, because mentioning um, race, being a black man teaching Pilates in Toronto, which literally there's like one handful like of us that that, that (laughs) teach in Toronto. Um, That's something I quickly started to understand as I um, grew older in the world of dance, ballet, Mm -hmm. especially because it is it's an extremely um, white world. Yeah. So I only started understanding and knowing other black dancers when I <clears throat> when I started with the Dance Theater of Harlem. That was a huge eye opener for me. Um, okay. But yeah, background in ballet, did that professionally for a long time, and I retired. <laughs> <laughs> not a and, huge, uh, not a very long career. Yeah, I, but and injuries and stuff like that too. Because I mean, usually like you hear like crazy injuries in, in dance, right? Yeah, tons of injuries. Um, My first, I guess, venture into the world of injury was when I was nine or 10. I started physiotherapy for my knees, which has been a lifelong issue. Um, So, I mean, I've done everything from, you know, as little as sprained ankles uh, to dislocated knees and um, hip injuries. I've torn bursas in my hip, uh, torn hip flexors, all that kind of fun stuff. I tore my hamstring once. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever really fully recovered from that, but yeah. 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 And mm. yeah, you got a whole shopping list there. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. you move so well still, man. Like have you seen this guy's post, like just a great, great mover. So it's uh, in spite I, of that, you're still, you're still doing it. I feel, I feel I'm doing, I feel like I'm doing okay. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm doing okay right now. Yeah. So yeah, it's, uh, it's lovely. Hey, Bargavi. Hey, Jackie. Sorry, I see some familiar names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries, man. Um, um, so uh, how did you find Pilates? Pilates kind of happened by accident. Okay, so I did my first... Like, I was a dance snob. I was like, Pilates, what? I mean, it's not ballet. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> I did my first Pilates class at an establishment um, that's no longer around. When I was probably 26, I was just looking for something uh, and I hated it. Um, I realized in retrospect, the reason why I didn't like it was because of the way it was taught. You know, a lot of it has to do with your instruction and the instructor. Um, So it wasn't a really well composed class and it wasn't really um, great. I went back into it or fell back into it um, when I started working at Equinox. Okay. So Equinox hired me for my bar program. Um, I taught bar there and then I fell into the whole world of Pilates. In fact, someone who is a big mentor to me, who I'm sure you know, is Natalia. 
Um, uh, I met her just Natalia Sebastian. Digitally. Yeah, yeah, she's incredible, really incredible with what mm -hmm. she does. And so she's been a really big influence on what I do um, in terms yeah. of Pilates. Also, she really understands, having been a dancer herself, she understands yeah. how um, we move. And so it just right. clicked right away. Right. Yeah, no, it's... Um... Can you speak to that? Now, I, I come from athletic background, right? So in mm -hmm. the same way that people can connect with you as a dancer, people connect with me coming as a, a, a non-fluid moving athlete mm -hmm. to this Pilates world too. So but how you would you... Well as well. Pardon? You move well. I move okay. I don't move <laughs> as well as you. <laughs> like, you know, like... I mean, you like the Jean-Claude Nelsons of the world. Like, that's like a next level of move, right? Like I think that yourself and like Fabrice and, and France, I've seen some of you guys move and I'm like, okay, cut my losses. <laughs> um, but how, how would you say, what are the differences or what are some of the nuances to, to teaching Pilates to dancers? Oh, <laughs> big thing, um, spine, ribs we overextend a lot, yes. right? Um, turnout. It is right. so hard for a dancer to not do something in external rotation. Yes. Um, it's funny because to this day, I mean, I'm almost 40. And when I go to like my physio, for example, the first thing they do is like, when it comes to my hips, you know, they manipulate the foot and try to give you the, they go like external rotation and then go internal rotation. And I have like zero. No internal, <laughs> right. Yeah, so they're like, dancer and I'm like yes, yes obviously so that's one of the things that's really hard for dancers it's also mm -hmm. hard for ballet dancers I find ballet dancers specifically to not um point they're to, like really like arch the foot yes. right 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 whereas you know a lot of things in Pilates you want to do with a flexed foot or a, you know what I mean so it's uh mm -hmm. I feel like the external rotation is probably the biggest thing Okay. And maybe overdoing things because dancers can be a little bit crazy in that we have, I mean, I don't know anybody who has a higher threshold for pain other than a ballet dancer, like, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, so we can really go into something when it, to the point where it could become unsafe. So I find that when I'm training dancers, um, I have to, I can push them in a sense further, but almost have to reel it back sometimes. Right? Yes, I just wrote down high threshold because I, I feel like when I'm working with football players, for example, like there's that same kind of, it doesn't matter how you feel, just get the play done mindset. So it's not even necessarily much their threshold as much as a determination mutes yeah. the messages their body is sending them. Yeah. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, I, I find that it's like, whether it's like for both of them too, it's just like, okay, I need to get my leg to here to do this exercise. I'm just going to get it there. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of learning to um, bring that back to kind of reel that in. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, that just reminds me of a conversation. Uh, he's on here, OV chiropractic, uh, a chiropractor in the studio clinic that, that I work. He was mm -hmm. saying, you know, Understanding and listening to your body helps us to, to know what that range is um, because that same person can come in and based on the stress in their life and the way they slept and all these different things, you have a different body in front of you with that same person. Yeah. Um, you know, so for him as a Cairo or for us, you know, as you know, movement practitioners, so to speak, it's easy for us to force people to their end range or force people to, to finish a move instead of seeing what their body needs today. So, you know, it's funny you say that because when I first started training with Natalia, that was one of the things that she stressed was okay. dealing with the body that's in front of you right now. And that body can be the same person, but in a different experience from day to day, right? Yes. And I mean, I can speak from experience in my own body. I mean, where I was training so hard and like one day to be my hip, that's like, done and then the next day it's my lumbar spine because I mean I've also like um had a bulging disc in my lumbar spine which was really not fun um, <laughs> I was waiting for you to say that it was, <laughs> those are so not fun it yeah. was super awful it was insane um yeah so I mean that it, like every everybody is different and everybody is different and even in yes. that 
individual body, you have different days. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So then what do you do with like your average Joe Schmo office guy who walks in for Pilates? <laughs> you know, do you start with an evil snicker every time too? Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. This is why my sister doesn't like working out with me. She thinks I'm evil. Yeah. Um, you know, it really depends on the person. I, like, so, okay, my average Joe that's coming in, um, I like to start off with a little bit of, like, you want to know what exercises I start them off with? Well, yeah, I mean, like, that's part of it. Like, definitely. I mean, that's going to change from person to person. So, I mean, we all have a, a skeleton of a game plan yeah. with people that we work with, right? So Yes. <laughs> okay, so when I have, like, my average Joe Schmo coming in for the first time, typically I will, I, like, I tend to get a really good sense of how you move literally by just getting you into footwork right away. Yeah. I yeah. feel like it's a really great, I'm, I'm, it's, I think it took a lot of, like, I've got some great instinct, but also with the training, I find it gets really easy for me to look at how you move in footwork and see imbalances in the body, whether it's in the spine, the hips, the ankles, um, the feet. Yes. Um, so it's, I find that that is really, really helpful. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so that's true. one way. Yeah, and that's, you know, that makes me think from an athletic perspective, movement prep, right? Like if you're going to get an athlete ready to do squats and deadlifts, you have them doing some kind of movement prep. So even if it's the first exercises from a classical perspective, that almost becomes your movement prep yeah. for some of the more compl complex exercises and more higher demands on the body coming later. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, you're going to get a lot of, you're going to get a lot of work um a lot done even just doing um beginner syllabus on reformer or even um beginner math it's true <laughs> and yeah. i honestly i don't want to skip people forward like i don't want to jump you forward until your body is ready for it and mm -hmm. like i say all the time too it's like building something right because really what you are is building something yeah. um you can't have you can't build a big picture without the tiny details mm -hmm. i'm mm -hmm. such a virgo so I'm all about the details okay. all the time, you yeah. know? And this yeah. is part of why people come to me, you yes. know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Well, that's just it, right? And, you know, and the other side to that too is the same, like you're saying, you train to the body in front of you. There may be times where just look at that body and the body can do a quote unquote advanced exercise, but they're going to struggle with a basic exercise. Yeah, absolutely. For the rest of their life. But I've trained like athletes, like, and I mean, really, you know, strong guys right a yeah. lot of muscles strong yes exactly yes. yes and they can't do a roll up or mm -hmm. pulling straps or right. um even just like leg circles leg circles it's just it is it's like it's like pulling teeth it's really difficult for them and mm. i think that's when they start to see wait a minute there are holes in this big picture, right? Yes, and that yes. big picture can only last for so long before mm -hmm. it starts to break down. You've kind of got to get all those teeny tiny nuances yes. in there before you right. can get there. Totally. So if, and I almost have like my elevator pitch for those kind of athletes where I would say, Pilates is going to make you stronger in your weakest links. Yes. Right. It's also going to highlight. <laughs> it's going to expose them, not going to yeah, highlight them. Quickly. It's going to expose them. Yeah. Like, and, then, and I love that. And then when I have those guys in, that's the first thing I, I want to go at is just to show, and not to embarrass them, but like you want to see within your body, what are my weak links? Like where are my yeah. muscle imbalances, right? So yeah. you introduce those to them. That usually gets people connected and, and hooked on it. Absolutely. And I'm like a dog on a bone with that. Yes. I will go there and keep poking and digging. Right. No. That, you know, it's funny. well, I'm going to get to uh, Ovi's comment here. Like, strong guys love to compensate. Yes. Yep. No, I would agree with that 100%. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But then um, I don't think that is a strength, really? Well, yeah, exactly. Well, that's, well, if you think about it, like, um, have you ever done any functional movement uh, screening, like those kind of courses? Mm -hmm. And, you know, in the intros, they'll say something like LeBron James and his score on a functional movement screen wouldn't be stellar because basketball requires you to do the same movement patterns all the time. All the time. So he's not going to have a, a spectacular score. He'll be a phenomenal player, 
but his functional movement screen would expose the fact that he's right-handed or that he drives left all the time or he, whatever the case is. Yeah. So there's compensations that lend to your sports. So it's not Tom Brady, because he was the first big athlete that I recall, um, like, talking about his cross-training in Pilates. Yes. Which is why he's had such longevity and has had such quality of play. And I mean, I don't watch football, but I do understand that he is in an admired player, right? Yes, yeah. Um, and so I really appreciated that. I wish that more would take that approach, um, mm -hmm. you know, because he, you know that you're going to get more benefits and you will actually play your game better. So imagine if LeBron James actually did play and do Pilates too. He actually does. Does he? He does. Oh, this gives me life. Yeah, man. I'll send you a, I have a, on my Real Men Do Pilates page, there's a quote, I was watching a documentary on him and he was saying like, it's on my page where he says, you know, uh, in my off season, I know the interviewer was saying like, well, you know, I heard that you don't really take any time off. He's like, well, no, I don't. You know, even when I'm supposed to stop, I still do this and this. He goes, I do Pilates. And, and I was like, wait, back up. What was that? Like, that's delicious. Yeah. 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 He, he gets it. He gets mm -hmm. it. Like the million dollars that he spends on his cross training and his off season training, Pilates is right in the mix with all that stuff. That's so good yep. and necessary, I think, for like, well, really everybody. Everybody. That's, that's why we're here. For everybody. I've been yes. trying to get my dad to do Pilates forever. Hey, you know, I, that's, can we just talk about that for a second? Because like my dad does do Pilates with me and, and I, one, I love it. I love seeing him move and all those different things. But just on another level, when your parents sub like kind of just like give their like they entrust you with their body like that mm -hmm. it's a pretty cool thing yeah i it's a absolutely. it's a pretty cool thing yeah so there are things that my dad i will he'll he'll take from me pilates is like i i'm not getting on that contraption like it's just... <laughs> one day no. he'll come oh i will get him there yeah 100 yeah. percent Yes. So speaking of that, how do we get more men into our studios? You know, it's funny because I, I try to think about in my client list, the amount of men I have really pales in comparison to the amount of women. Right. Um, how do we get men into Pilates? Honestly, I think it's just a little bit more awareness. Um, I think it comes down to, you know, I've had a couple of trainers who are men, mm -hmm. um, who I've trained in Pilates. I've, I've seen some of those posts too. Yeah. Right. They move well too. Yeah, they do. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then they're like, wait a minute, this is, this is no joke. And I'm like, no, of course it's not. I think, I think, I think a lot of men need to understand that, you can get uh, just as much of a workout. Uh, you can feel your muscles just as much or even more in certain instances um, doing Pilates, mm -hmm. whether it's like Tower or Reformer or Cadillac, you know what I mean? Kind of thing. There's so many different things that you can do that are going to challenge you. I think one of the things is um, a lot of men feel like, well, I'm not gonna be challenged and what is it, stretching? Um, right. so I think it's kind of dispelling the myths when it comes to Pilates. Dispelling the myths. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think so. Um, you know, cause there is, I mean, even the stretching side of it too, you know, to say recovery is training, you, uh, athletes get that, mm -hmm. but then they think, okay, well, that's my rest day. Like, no, no, it's a training day. Like if we're going to work on your range of motion, your mobility and get those hips moving and spinal articulation through Pilates. That's a training day. That day's yeah. just as important as your bench press day. Absolutely. I would say, like, in terms of, God, bench press, and, like, I would, I would choose a training day in Pilates over a bench press day only because you can get the same um, or the similar feeling right from the bench press but so much more right it's becoming right. functional now exactly i um, agree uh, and that's my commentary on standard football testing where it's like they still want to know what your bench press is like how does your bench press help you on the field mm -hmm. 
right? But then that's that's the thing. So um, it is dispelling myths. It is challenging the conventions and the traditions uh, around training. So I like hearing that Tom Brady does Pilates. I love seeing LeBron James or even Sylvester Stallone, right? His daughter. Yeah. Yeah, his daughter's an instructor. So he, he's quote, like, Pilates is no joke. Like, he said that, like, drip sweating you know, from a workout, right? So we need to get those images out there. Yeah, I think it's that like getting the images out there, I think is actually a really important thing to do mm -hmm. as well, for sure. Yeah. I mean, if Rocky is saying that he does Pilates, that's a great thing. Right, yeah, we all should be doing it if Rocky's doing it. Exactly. Yeah, the, um, I, I use the line, real men do Pilates yes. a lot. If I was to ask you how you would define that, like what does that actually mean? Could you put that together? In terms of the whole statement, real men do Pilates? Yep. I would usually prime you for this, but I figured you're, you're good. You can figure it out. Mm -hmm. So to me, a real man is someone who is comfortable in who they are, not needing to um, egoically portray a certain image, um, being willing to look foolish or to look, I guess maybe um, weak, right? To poke holes and not take themselves so seriously. I think that that is that those are some qualities yes. of what a real man is. Mm -hmm. um, should Love I that. elaborate? Oh no! <laughs> I mean, yeah, keep unpacking it. That's that's great, right? Like, you know, I feel like I, you know, you know, especially with what I teach. Uh, I remember starting off in the industry and I felt so underestimated, like, you know, people would underestimate me all the time, which I say often is one of my favorite things to do mm -hmm. or to get is to be underestimated. Yeah. Um, because I'm live, I teach bar mm -hmm. and Pilates. I also teach conditioning as well. But, um, you know, you get underestimated. And I find what happens is you get so many men with these egos that are like that... Um, I can't do that. I don't want to look weak in front of like yes. a class that's predominantly women or right. even looking weak in front of me. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, actually, I have a couple of guys who would come to my bar classes regularly um, and were willing to just be like, I don't know what I'm doing. Whoa, this hurts. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, you know what I mean? And they just kind of and to me, that's like, that's a good like, that's a real man. That's a real man. Yeah. Yeah. Because that, that overarches into your emotional state too, right? Like, I mean, this, this sense of stoicism as a man and masculinity is about not showing feelings and not showing brokenness and not showing hurt, right? So oh. then, you know what I mean? So if, if yeah. we've been raised with those messages, of course, that's going to bleed into our fitness. And I'm going to do the things that yes. make me look good and competent and quote unquote strong. Oh, I'm so over that. So Honestly, over that. like I, you know, and I think it comes into this whole like like myths about sexuality when it comes into that yes. well i don't want to look gay or effeminate and whatnot and it's just it's it feels really ridiculous i'm very blessed to have a father who is always open emotionally mm -hmm. um with his children with his family he just is yes. um so i learned from a young age that you need to express like what you know what i mean kind of thing yeah. so yeah it's an important thing. And I feel like that really, that whole idea of like, no, I, I'm good and I'm gonna, I'm gonna look strong really does feed into the whole idea of toxic masculinity. Yes. That you have such a rich life, I'm sure, as a result of being raised in that environment. Um, because when I see guys that, that have that really closed perspective, I have pity on them. Like, I really feel like you are missing on, on a lot of life by looking at like through that lens so much it's so sad really you know you could be enjoying so much more just being open just being open mm -hmm. and that's uh it's so funny how it's you know Pilates just really bleeds into every, every other part of our life in terms of what we can see from the mat so to speak yeah absolutely yeah for sure mm -hmm. That's why I like that term, real men do, do Pilates. And I like throwing that out for men to just say what that looks like. Yeah. Because it's not about Pilates. Now. Ego. <laughs> Ego. Yes. Now. Yeah. Oh. It's about 
yeah yeah so that's uh so that's really where that comes down to now um we're talking i just in our interactions as we've been going back and forth a little bit you're talking about your career path and where mm -hmm. you're at with your business right now yeah yeah can you just talk about that and just in the building of your brand and what you're doing if it's if it's ready to be unleashed it's almost we're in the process of this so um before uh COVID hit i have you know i'm always wanting to evolve um yes. so i was trying to figure out what am i going to do what do i want to do is this what i really want to stay doing how is this gonna you know evolve so we had the i have a really great team a great friend who is working on this for me um and we had the idea of you know having an online presence so as soon as covid hit i actually went online right away i was like okay i hear you this is happening now <laughs> yes yeah <laughs> put fast track on that please yeah exactly um i can tell you that it will be a continued online presence okay um i've never really been interested in brick and mortar you know, one of the things that I've always gotten, you know, I have a very specific clientele. And yes. one of the things that I've always gotten is, oh, my God, Derek, like when I travel, I need you in my pocket. And how am I going to get you in my pocket and all this stuff? So um, it will be a place where you will be able to go and find what I do, whether you want to do a live workout yes. or whether it is um, a library of pre-recorded programs. Amazing. Yeah. Derek in your pocket. Exactly. Dot com. Well, pocket Derek. Pocket Derek. Yes. Yeah, yeah exactly. And uh, so why not the bricks and mortar? Like I hear the the rationale for wanting to be, you know, to be able to your pocket, but like, why not bricks and mortar? Um, and not that it's bad. I just, I just, I'm just curious as to your perspective on it. I feel. So when I say no brick and mortar, I mean, I, I do still want to keep a space where I've got my reformers, um, like, and a little bit of like my equipment, right? So mm -hmm. for one-on-ones or semi-privates and whatnot, um, live. I enjoy the freedom. That's one thing. Yes. So, you know, it's a hustle in this industry. It really Absolutely. can be. I mean, I hustled a lot when I first started and I'm very lucky to be in the position that I am now where I can just kind of, I can pick and choose. Yes. Um, uh, and even at that, I really like, so especially during COVID, I've really grown uh, accustomed to and comfortable with the freedom of being online. Mm -hmm. You know, I can go anywhere. I was at the cottage a couple of weeks ago. I taught from the cottage. Um, I can do, I love to travel. So I can teach if I'm in Brazil, I can like teach a class or not. Like, you know right. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Maybe you've got this catalog of stuff. Um, so the brick and mortar, I don't want to be held to a schedule. I'm yes. being very candid. I don't want to be held to a schedule. I've been held to a schedule for so long, yes. especially growing up as a dancer. You're here for this amount of time and you're here and you have to do this and da da da, da. Like, so I just, right. I'm no longer interested in that very much. Yes. Oh, I yeah. hear you. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. It also feels like a big, um, you know, I, I appreciate what goes in to maintaining a space. Right. Um, and I don't think I'm there. You know, not everyone's wired for that either, right? Like, yeah. you know, I've, I've been in the, you know, since 2002, I started my business and I right out the gates that it's a consulting business as opposed to bricks and mortar. Yeah. Because I wanted to be able to subcontract, work here, do this, travel, be somewhere, actually be on site, like be on a field with the team instead of expecting the whole team to come to me or whatever the case was. So, I, yeah, I hear you on that. I hear that that's uh, – and not everyone's necessarily wired to that. Like I don't think I'm the strongest person administratively. So if I had all that under me, I'm like, not. yeah, something might fall through the cracks, right? So Yeah. Yeah. Listen – I'm not closed off to it. Mm -hmm. It's just not in my, it's not in my vision right now. For sure. That's yeah. like, you know, the conversation over the weekend with Sonia uh, from Black Girl Pilates, 
was about purpose, right? So even right. with our conference, it's, uh, and even actually last week, all the meeting, the conversations I had around, you know, we think that in Pilates, we need to be, the gold star is to have your own space. Well, no, the gold star is to walk in your own purpose. Exactly. It is, totally. Um, you know, I know that I'm really fortunate in that that's something I've kind of always understood for myself. I'm like, I'm not doing things because it's the thing to do. Yes. I do it if it speaks to me. I'm very organic in that sense. Right, right. And that's almost a full circle conversation to like having dads that speak into our lives that give you permission to do that. Yeah. You're right, if that's reinforced from young, there's no one that can come from outside and, and change that philosophy for you. Yeah, it's funny because um, I know that it's a wonderful blessing to have a father who's like, I just want you to be happy. Like, what do you want to do? I know that when I started in the industry, actually, he had some concerns. He's like, how is this going to, how are you going to pay your bills? Yeah, how are you going to make money? Hmm. Um, and I'm like, don't worry about it. And um, the big thing for him was longevity. How are you going to keep this going? Like, because yes. you have one body and yada, yada. Um, lo and behold, everything is changing so that I actually don't have to work as hard. Right. And that's the other thing about um, the brick and mortar is I want to be able to, I need to rest. Like I need to, I've been going hard on my body since I was five years old. So yeah, I hear you. Rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a man. That's a different world. It's not like me starting my work world after finishing university. Like you right. were like in the spotlight from young. That's that's. Yeah, it's 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 a lot. So this is why when people actually bargain me when she, that was part of her comment, she said, you know, this is a lifetime, and it is. Like I mean, I've been working physically like you know i've been physically active for my whole life mm -hmm. so i you know i equate it to this like i don't know i don't know what it's like not to be able to do the splits i mean it, to me that sounds <laughs> it feels like i'm like i don't know what that feels like yeah me too yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> like i just don't know <laughs> yeah <laughs> So it's it's a different kind of thing for me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so. I'm enjoying taking it easier now. Yeah, no, that's good, man. We um as we segue into the conversation of being black in this fitness industry. Uh -huh. What does that look like for you in your skin in this country, in this city? Like there's so many different variables to our our Pilates friends in Atlanta, right? Yeah. Like, um, it's when okay. When I first started in the industry, first of all, I barely saw anybody that looked like me. Like, I just didn't. Um, uh, I actually started off working for Quad. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if you know Quad Spinning. Okay. Yeah. They were like the premier spin studio in Toronto and it's owned by a black woman. Okay. She was the only person oh. that I had seen. Yeah. Yes. I, 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 um, yeah. yeah. Micheline. Mm -hmm. And so I was, first of all, I was like, oh, and then she was really the only black person that I had known that was in the industry. Moving more into what, like into the niches that I, you know, the niche that I'm in. Um, bar Pilates specifically. I've always found myself, I feel like when I first started, I kind of muted myself a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, that didn't last long. Uh, I really came out of my shell. I can't yeah. be anything, all, uh, anything else other than myself authentically. Yes. Um, but it is something that is marketed to mainly um, rich white women. It is, it's not something that 
seems attainable, even if you just look at the price of what it yeah. costs for a Pilates session. Yeah, accessibility is um, not there. It's not accessible um, to everybody. Um, so it's been really interesting. It's funny because only recently have I had the opportunity to be in contact with or um, have like black people in the industry who've reached out and like I'm learning of them and they're learning of me or, you know, so it's, 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 it's complicated, I feel like. Very. It you is. Um, especially, I don't really have, I like, I think about the clients that I have that are of color. And I don't really. And that's not great, you know? Mm -hmm. So another thing I want to be able to do is to reach out to, um, you know, young people who are of color. Yes. in this industry. I have, I'm trying to think, Avanti and Samir, I think Avanti logged on. Um, East Indian, I have, yes. so I have uh, people of color, but I don't have, I don't have any black people, right. you know? Which is crazy to me. Right. There's a lot of us. There is, there really yeah. is. But you know what's funny too, um, as much as we want to say we're a black owned business and we're a black plus instructors and stuff, all these different things, I think that, and people may disagree with me on this, like, I think the fact that we are providing a quality service is paramount. Yes. Right? So if you have all white people that come to you because you're good, that's more important than having black people come to you because you're black. Absolutely. And that's not what I want or nor want to focus on. I nor think I. what I'm saying is that I think it's important to make it accessible to all because it's I hear not that. something that I think that like um like 16 year old black guy in Scarborough is thinking of you know Pilates no. as either a workout a or b even a career you know it's not right. something that's like introduced it's yes. you know so I think it's um I think it's just important to have that pushed out there mm -hmm. for all you yes. know I think, you know, and I agree with that 100%. And that is prob primarily why I'm so passionate about Pilates for basketball. Yeah. Like my, my young guy's 14, plays at a high level. I was like, wait a minute, these kids, if they get it, like, they're not waiting until they're 30, like LeBron, to figure that out. If they're mm -hmm. learning Pilates as something that is another part of their conditioning, another piece in the puzzle for their conditioning from 14, they're they're gonna they'll move better they'll be injury free all those different things and that might be a career path for somebody so yeah so that 16 year old in scarborough now this is an option when you have a black man walk up in front of you who is solid as an instructor and you're challenged by his workouts and it's plotted which you've never heard of like if we can get all those pieces together then yeah. you know it, it, it has a ripple effect um i i did a presentation at a school um an alternative school so it was a mixed crowd of kids um, probably about two years ago. And the experience was great because they had, first of all, they were like, who's this guy coming in to, like, who is this? Right. With the nails, my nails were done at the time. There you um, go. And <laughs> uh, went in and I presented and got them moving and so much fun. And a couple of those kids were like, I've never done any, I've never thought of anything like this before. So it was really nice to open their minds to something else. Yes. It wasn't hockey or basketball. Like, mm -hmm. you know, that was like, I can, I can express in a different way. This is wonderful. Yes. So that I was a sweat in a different way. Exactly. Yeah. 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 What's the question? Is it this one right here? Yeah. Was well, getting into bricks and mortar studios more difficult than you're finding your online experience? No, um, uh, I don't like me getting a job into brick and mortar. Uh, yeah, I guess. I'm assuming that's what it is. Yes. Um, no, um, I was very, very fortunate. I mean, I'm a natural mover. So I think that my physical um, appearance uh, opened a lot of doors for me. I also yes. was very lucky to start um, at Quad, um, which was at the time such a huge platform. Yes. And then um, developing my bar program, 
Lydia, you know Lydia, Lydia Breda? Um, no, I'm not sure. Incredible fitness manager for years in Toronto. Um, she came and found me and she's who brought me over to Equinox. So I found, I find that my experience has been um, unique in that from the get go, I've always been very visible yes. um, and always pulled in. Derek, can you do this? Derek, can you? So I've never That's had amazing. any shortage of, yeah. So I, I do feel very fortunate in that sense. I've never had any, um, any shortage of work at mm. all. So right. it's been and, wonderful. And you can say that too, that that can be part of just our experience as black instructors in the GTA is that like yeah. I, we get, there's plenty of opportunities because there's like uh, one, two, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Three. So, so Perfect. there's not, yeah, it, there's, there's only a handful of us. So, and, yeah. and that's what brought me into the industry is thinking, wait a minute, there's not too many guys doing it. Hold on. There's not that many visible minorities. Like, I think we're going to have a corner on the market here if we're good. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I do know that that actually works for me very yes. much. Um, I mean, I live in annex like almost east annex so like rosedale um like rosedale and yorkville adjacent so my clientele is very um affluent yes and um from the very beginning i know that one of the things is i understand like my my body how i appear to people yes um because that is a thing in the fitness industry. Yep. Which I can't even dive into right now, but we'll get there. Um, <laughs> you have you have like ten minutes to dive into that, so you might yeah, want to exactly. start diving. Because I mean, yep. that's a double edged sword, don't you feel? Like I mean, it can it, it it works for you, and then it works against you, and and yeah. you have the personality that can leverage that, mm -hmm. in the same way that I have a personality that could leverage that too, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, it is a double edged sword. Do you want me to get into that? <laughs> yeah, man, let's go. <laughs> I I think I understand. My friend Siobhan was saying to me, I don't think you fully understand. And perhaps I don't fully understand, but I do understand my experience in my body. And I know that, you know, especially women, what I get a lot of is like, oh my God, I want your legs. Or can I do this? Or can I get your body? Am I going to do your class? And I'm gonna, am I going to look like you? And I'm like, no. no. Um, a, I'm a man. We don't have the same genetic makeup. B, um, isn't it just such a wonderful thing to have different kind of different bodies and be the strongest that you can in that body? Right. Um, Love that. So I appreciate how my physical appearance gets me in and how once I'm in, I can kind of aid in altering your uh ideas yeah i'm also not that kind of instructor or trainer that's like i don't give cues like let's tone those butts or like let's get those arms like that's not my thing at all i need right. you to understand that this is about a feeling um and yes the physical benefits of it will show eventually mm -hmm. but it's really about a feeling and a mentality yes um so yeah that's that's part of it that's it. Like, well, like in, in the PT world, we say you're training the movement, not the muscle. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And absolutely. That's, that's, and that's what you're saying. We're, we're getting, we're, we're, we're getting efficiency of movement. We're not necessarily going for that tight butt or those, that six right. pack. that that'll come as a result of moving well. And then like Joseph Pilates says, like, are you sleeping well? Are you eating well? Are you playing? There's so many other pieces to Pilates other than the physical movement that lend to this body that you're, you're chasing yeah. after. Absolutely. It's funny. I'm just smiling because my two friends, Casper and Yolanda, just logged on. Yes. And they've heard me talk about this time and time and time again. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, and part of that double edged sword is like the people like saying things about your body to you. Do you know yes. what I mean? Does that make sense? Yep. Perfectly. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah. really, really interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, we're still we're talking kind of in code a little bit there too, which is fine, because I, I get what you're saying. Do you want me to uncode? You could uncode. We got seven minutes to uncode, my friend. Um, I'm trying to think of what I need to uncode. Um, can I try? Yeah, absolutely. 
I think people look at us and our body gets in the door yeah. and then our experience and our eye and our cues and those things keep us in the room when they realize Absolutely. that what we have is more than what we present. Yeah, so exactly. So, you know, you'll get like, oh my God, like, wow, like this is so dynamic or like, you're so great at what you do. And I'm like, yeah, I, I am. I'm not, I'm not just right. this, yeah. you know? Um, so yeah, exactly. That's yeah. a huge part of it. It yeah. is, it is. Um, yeah, we do, uh, I just need to say to you, Derek, man, I just appreciate everything you're doing, man. Like you are, um, one, a great mover. Two, I see the influence that you're having on personal trainers and you're like you're bringing Pilates to the PT world with the people that you've been working with. Uh, you're so humble, super humble, just in the way that you present. Um, I think that the, the stigma with dancers is that everything needs to be so flamboyant and everything needs to be so, you know, out there, look at me. And you just present as a wise mover I, so i i love that i just want to commend you for just who you Thank are you. man legit like i really think that you're doing a great job and that you're just a, a real a real man thank you doing, that means a lot. as yeah. you too um you too absolutely i mean i've admired what you've been doing anyways as well for some time um but thank you i really appreciate that i feel like i'm I feel like i'm doing okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> Really you good. are yeah 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 so yeah so people who are just so excited to see you come on here were um you know they could say they couldn't stop talking about how nice you are and how awesome you are so um yeah you just verified that for everyone who's been watching for the last 50 minutes yeah. i'm a nice man. guy hey <laughs> my parents they're great people yes <laughs> so good man. three of yeah. us yeah Good stuff, man. All right. Well, I will sign you off, but thank you so much for joining me today, man. Thank you for having me. I really enjoyed the conversation. Thank you so much for joining us today on Core Conversations. This organic platform has been made possible by amazing people like yourself. So if you're a Pilates instructor or a movement specialist of some kind and you want to be a guest, please message me. If you're in some other field and you know the messages just resonate with you, message me. I'd love to have you on. All of our messages connect, and for some reason, they all help us in this battle. We're all in this game together, so I'd love to hear from you. Let your words be life to someone else. Check out our website, personalvictory.ca. Click the Core Conversations page to see who our upcoming guests are, and I will see you next time on Core Conversations.